This is the story of a general who pushed his army to the limits of human endurance. The story of a mind so brilliant that it brought Rome to the brink of destruction. But above all, it's the story of how history can turn on a single decision. A decision that would haunt Hannibal's life, seal his fate, and determine who would rule the Western world for the next 600 years. War is all I've ever known. War between Carthage and Rome. My father had fought Rome 40 years earlier. Then we were defeated, humiliated, stripped of our honor and our lands. But under my father's command, we rose again, expanded our territories from Northern Africa into Spain. Yet there could never be two masters of the Mediterranean. Either Rome or Carthage was destined for destruction. And I swore upon my father's memory it would not be Carthage. Hannibal Parker. Caius Terentius Varro, special ambassador of the Roman Senate. My brothers Mago and Hasdrubal. I think you know why I'm here. It's come to our attention that you've made military threats against the city of Saguntum. I have. Saguntum is an ally of Rome. She has our full protection. Saguntum is a city in Spain, not Italy. And yet she continues to attack Spanish allies of Carthage. Tell me, Caius Torrentius Varro, if this was a city on Roman soil, what would you do? I trust you understand the rules of engagement. Make war on Saguntum, and you make war on Rome. Saguntum was brutal to provoke Rome to fight me. It worked. Rome will not tolerate this unprovoked attack on one of our allies. We demand that you surrender this general responsible, Hannibal Barker, to Roman authority and to face Roman justice. On what authority do you come here to Carthage and threaten the Swabians? Saguntum was rightly punished for attacking our allies. This madness will not end well. It's Parker. He's pushing them to war. Peace or war? You say, Fabius. Let's Rome decide. War. Burn it all down.
The war I was born to fight had begun. It would be a fight for the survival of our world. In Spain, Hannibal built the army that would fight his war. Drawn from all over Spain and Africa, it was an army of different colors and creeds, but united by one common purpose, to restore honor and power to Carthage. Eight thousand cavalry, forty thousand infantry, slingers, lancers. I want the men to be prepared to move without warning. They're ready, my brother. Your Numidian cavalry, Mahaba. How fast are they? As fast as the wind, General. Don't humor me, Mahaba. They're faster than the Romans, sir. Elephants? 37. Condition? They're healthy animals. Get these children out of here. We're going to war. The Romans are sending two armies. One down to Sicily, from where they will hope to attack Carthage. The other up into southern France, from where they will try and attack us, here, in Spain. Except, we won't be here. We've always talked about taking the war to the Romans, fighting him on his own soil. Well, now that time has come. We can't attack by ship, because Rome controls the sea. Instead, we will invade by land. We'll take the army up through Spain, into France, across the Rhone, and then east into Italy. We know the coastal roads are well defended. So to avoid that, we're going over the Alps. Fifty thousand men across the mountains. It's the shortest, most direct route. Never in his wildest dreams would the Roman think us capable of such audacity. Gisco has just come back from the Alps. He's found us guides, a way through. He thinks we can do it. And as we all know, he is the most cautious amongst us. Alexander took 50,000 men from Greece, conquered the world. Not bad for a Greek, but we can do better. Now go. Brief your men. They don't like it. They don't need to. I don't like it. Well, fortunately for you, my brother, I can't take everyone. I need someone to stay here and defend Spain, make sure that our Spanish territories are safe. Then stay and defend them. You've heard my intention. Our father fought for eight years to secure Spain for Carthage. And you're going to abandon it to take such a risk. Of such things, great victories are made. And great defeats. We must show Rome that we will not be kicked or humiliated again. And I will do anything to return honor and respect back to Carthage. And I can only do that if I know that Spain is in safe hands. My brother, I promise you that one year from now we will stand together again on the banks of the Tiber in Rome, victorious. 50,000 lives are in your hands. And who would lead them instead of me, you? They would not follow me, but they would follow you, brother. They'll follow you to their deaths. I was asking my people for nothing less than total sacrifice. To leave behind what was most precious to them, knowing they might never return. There could be no exceptions. See, we're making progress. Good. You'll be safe in Carthage, Imelji. Safe. Your Spanish wife kept hostage in Carthage to ensure my people don't desert to Rome. It is the normal condition of war. Don't pretend it's for my safety. 
We fought hard for Spain, Imelche. We must ensure her safety. Fought? You even married for Spain? Soon this will be over. I'll have my revenge on Rome. And we will be together again. In the first war with Rome, Carthage had fought a defensive campaign and lost. The Romans expected the second war to follow the same course. But doing what Rome least expected was to become Hannibal's trademark. Taking the war to Rome meant marching 90,000 foot soldiers, 12,000 cavalry, and 37 elephants across 1,500 miles before winter. We'll be at the Rome before harvest, then we can reprovision before we cross the Alps. Providing the harvest isn't late, or we are. I wouldn't want to be in those mountains when the snows come. We have time, Mahabal. South of the river Ebro, Hannibal's army traveled through lands owned by tribes loyal to Carthage. But once north of the river, they entered hostile territory. Our guides, I assume. Our safe passage depended on the goodwill of savage tribesmen, loyal to neither Carthage nor Rome, only to themselves. He says he likes what we've given him. He says the routes are difficult, and without a guide, we will be lost. He even offered to guide us through himself. I tell him that uh, we're grateful to his people, and that we thank him for his help. It was a risk we had no choice but to take. Few of my men had traveled so far north before. They were nervous, unsettled, with good reason. the deserters. The colleague men, when we catch one, we have the horses pull them apart as an example. Spare the horses, Maharbal. Our numbers will swell when the northern tribes join us. Come on, come on! The come on! Come on! Prisoners will show us the way. If they don't, kill them.
Our journey had barely begun, yet already the forces of nature were dividing the weak from the strong. I knew that only the strong would be useful to me in Italy. We have to press back. It took too long to get here. We misjudged. We. If we winter here. If we winter here, the largest army ever assembled will be waiting for us on the other side. We're crossing the mountains. Romans have landed at Marseille. Well, that's only three days' march from here. We can attack them there. We will attack the Romans on Roman soil. Winter or summer. We're going over the Alps to finish this. The Roman army had stopped at Marseille to resupply for their voyage to Spain. They had no idea Hannibal's army was so close. This can't be. It's true, General. He has already crossed the Pyrenees and is almost at the Rhone. We plan to fight him in Spain. Perhaps he's trying to protect Spain by fighting us in France instead. Publius Scipio was a typical Roman general. Dependable, predictable. He simply wanted to hunt me down and finish me, if he could find me. Or oh, is his target Rome? Maybe his target is Rome. And he will need to stay close to the sea to get there. No man would march an army inland. The terrain is too difficult. The mountains. And those damn ghouls. Tomorrow we march to intercept them. says they left three days ago. Which way did they go? They went east, sir, towards the mountains. Do you really think he could cross the Alps? If he succeeds, he'll find us waiting for him at the other side. I am returning to Italy to raise a new army. We will crush him, even as his homeland lies in ruins. We underestimate this barbarian no more. Publius Scipio had been outmaneuvered and outwitted by his rival. It was a lesson that the family of Scipio, particularly the son, would never forget. One thing stood between us and Roman soil. 120 miles of snow, ice and rock. Hannibal entered the foothills of the Alps at the onset of winter. His men were used to the mild climates of Spain and North Africa but they were ill-prepared to deal with the conditions they would face here. army moved higher to altitudes of up to 8,000 feet, there was no food, no shelter, no respite. To make it through, my men had to march without rest. If we stopped at all, we would die. Exposure and hunger ate through us. Come on! Keep moving! That's it! 
Each day, over a thousand lives were lost, yet I was certain of our course. As Hannibal reached the summit, he found the route down had been blocked by a landslide. Why have we stopped? The way is blocked. Bring up firewood and the wine. laid on his side in the snow. Keep it cold. thousand men marched into those mountains. Little more than half that marched out the other side. To keep Roman feet from Carthaginian soil, it was a sacrifice I was prepared to accept. The march from New Carthage had taken seven months. A total of 70,000 men had died or deserted along the way. A far greater challenge now lay ahead. We're through. Hannibal had come here to fight, but his weakened and demoralized forces had not yet come face to face with their real enemy. They made it through, but now they're all sick. It's the cold, General. They're not used to it. Can anything be done? Rest, perhaps. But even then, I can't be sure when they'll be ready for battle.
This is no army. They just need food and rest. We need more men. We will find more men among the local tribes. All the savages, warriors, Maharabal. Like us, who hate Rome. Like us. I was fighting not just the Romans. Half of their army was drawn from alliances across Italy. To defeat Rome, I had to test the strength of those alliances. What are you asking me for? Food, arms, men. To fight the Romans? To defeat the Romans. Your men are half dead. They're starving, exhausted. You speak of madness. No. Freedom. When your army goes, what then? We have stood up to Rome before. Do you know what the Romans do to those who fight them? They do not leave a living soul. The bodies of our people were mixed with the corpses of our dogs. If you join us, there will be no more threat from Rome. I swear it. Cowards. What good are cowards to us? They're not cowards. They fought the Romans. So what do we do? We turn back. Across the mountains. Or we stay and fight. We don't have enough men. No battle is won by numbers alone. What counts is the desire to survive. To prove that to my men, I set the prisoners a challenge, a fight to the death, the prize, their freedom. I wanted to show my army that they too faced either death or a fight for an even greater glory. This man has won his freedom by fighting for his life. I gave him no choice. Just as our gods give us no choice but to fight for our lives. In the days to come, you will face the Roman army. His numbers are greater than ours. He has more food in his belly and he is better supplied. But the Roman soldier fights because he is ordered to. We fight to reclaim what is ours. The Romans think we are barbarians, savages. Perhaps some of us are. <laughs> but when we engage on the field of battle, it will be in the sure and certain knowledge that bravery will bring us victory. Cowardice and hesitation will bring us nothing but defeat and certain death. We fight for life! We fight for death! Hannibal rallied his forces, 
the army of Publius Scipio marched north to confront him. The sooner we know his position and his numbers, the sooner we can punish this barbarian for setting foot on Roman soil. Four or five thousand light infantry and cavalry. Tell your men to keep out of sight behind that hill. Here it begins. I knew the Romans would think us an easy target, still weak from the long march. That's exactly what I wanted them to think. So the cavalry didn't disappoint, General. They fought bravely. They were well led. <laughs> they were. <laughs> to be fair, my Roman counterpart didn't seem in the mood for a fight. You very nearly killed him. Nearly? Are you losing your edge, Mahalbal? He was rescued by his son. That's two generations to escape your blade. Who is this family? Fate smiles so kindly upon. Their name is Scipio. One of Rome's most noble families. I bet they still bleed the same color as their foot soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> the father is wounded. Perhaps next time it'll be the son's turn. Then we can put a stop to these noble Scipios and their services to Rome. today is only the beginning, my friend. Hannibal's first triumph on Roman soil sealed his alliance with the tribes of northern Italy. In response, Rome recalled its second army from Sicily to reinforce the defenses of Publius Scipio. Publius. 
Thank you. I understand your father owes his life to your bravery. And I'm glad to see my fellow consul looking in better health. The doctors assure me I'll make a full recovery. Excellent. It is my view. We should strike at Hannibal without any further delay. And not allow him to enjoy his lucky victory. If lucky it was, of course. They just came out of nowhere. They nearly trampled us down before we could even draw our swords. I'm surprised to hear you speak like this in the barbarian. I can learn a lot in a day, Sempronius. For any further confrontations, I suggest we rest our armies for winter. Every hour this Carthaginian spends on Roman soil is an insult. We need action. Swift action before he finds his footing. Tomorrow, I march for Trebia. As consuls, Publius and Longus shared the highest political position in Rome. Each term of office lasted just one year. With time running out, Longus was desperate to fight. At Trebia, I offered battle before his army was prepared, and he took the bait. 25,000 of their finest soldiers were slaughtered. At Trasimene, they threw the might of the Roman army against me. Under cover of mist, we forced them into a lake and massacred 15,000 of them. Some even drowned themselves rather than face our sword. Before I was just a name, known only to a few, a shadow came out of the mountains. Now, the shadow I cast reached across the heart of Italy. One more decisive victory, and this war would be over. Hannibal's army was now within striking distance of Rome. For the first time in 50 years, a military dictator was appointed. The man they chose was Fabius Maximus. May I remind you all that Hannibal's army is 100 miles from Rome? Well, then we must fight them. Fight them until we destroy them. Or until we are destroyed. Are you questioning, sir, the honor and the courage of the people of Rome? These are the facts. Trebia cost us 20,000 lives. We lost the consul and 15,000 soldiers at Trasimene. We are losing. And if we continue along the path of direct confrontation, Rome will be destroyed. Now is the time to be ruthless. And not just with our enemy but with ourselves, to face our failures, to reconsider our strategy. What is your proposal, Fabius? That we starve him of the one thing he thrives on, battle. The best way to fight Hannibal is not to fight him at all. Oh, he has a large army, but it is made up of many peoples who can be easily divided by harassment of their supply lines by starvation of his troops. In short, to kick his army in the stomach. These are the tactics of cowards, not soldiers. Would you have the great Roman army adopt the tactics of the savage? I would have the great Roman army do anything to defeat this Hannibal once and for all. <laughs> On the journey south, illness had eaten into me in a way that no enemy could. Do they really think they can outfight us this way? They know. A hungry army is a weak army. We have to find a way to draw them in for an attack. Where's the damn healer? He's on his way, my brother. We don't need a battlefield to defeat these Romans. I want their houses burned to the ground, their crops, their fields, everything that makes the Roman feel safe. I want it reduced to ash. Cap Fabius. I want his property to remain untouched. 
Then let's see how secure he feels once those around him start to lose everything. Sir Fabius, how would you say your strategy is progressing? He is trying to provoke you. Don't let him. It's not your land going up in smoke. The infection is very deep. Can anything be done? I'm sorry. Then leave me. Get out. Did I lose it? Yes. I am sorry. They may take it as an ill omen. It's not an ill omen. Of course not. Do you understand what it means to be a citizen of Rome, Skippy? It means whoever you are, wherever you go, people know that if you're attacked or mistreated, the whole might of Rome can be brought to bear in your defense. It is a unique privilege. I understand. This barbarian sets an example to every other half-breed and savage that Rome is to be trifled with. I speak out of turn. Your loyal to Fabius. Fabius is my commanding officer. Whoever held that rank would command my loyalty. Fabius humiliates Rome. My friend lacks your discipline, Scipio. Please forgive his outburst. He does perhaps raise an interesting point, though. But feel free to speak plainly, Scipio. You're among friends here. Our present tactics make us look weak to our friends and allies. Hannibal is laughing at us. This is not the way Rome should conduct itself. So, if circumstances were somehow to change, you would be in favor of engaging the barbarians? I would. Under the right leadership. Well, my friend, perhaps the way of Fabius will not be the way of Rome for much longer. Fabius's dictatorship is coming to an end. I myself am standing for consul. And then perhaps we shall find another way of dealing with our problem. Within six months, Pharaoh's ambition was realized and he was elected as consul. The dictatorship of Fabius came to an end and so did his policy of refusing to engage Hannibal in battle. Scipio was appointed to the rank of Tribune in the new regime. He joined the largest army Rome had ever put in the field and marched to confront Hannibal. Ewing battle would be one of the bloodiest ever fought. It looks like eight legions, 85,000 men. Are you beginning to miss Fabius, Jusco? 85,000. It's the largest army Rome has ever assembled. They've come as one, we'll kill them as one. They're well trained, they'll be hard to break. Discipline can be a flaw as well as a virtue. Yes. Fact. The Romans are trained to fight in one way only, which makes them predictable. We'll present them with the unexpected and watch them fall apart. Just go. You're afraid. Of course not. Don't be. There are 80,000 Romans out there. But not one of them is called Jisco.
This is ideal. We'll pitch our forces there, on that bank. We're protected by the river on our right and the hills on our left. There'll be no chance of a surprise attack. And this cavalry won't be able to get round behind us. I wouldn't be so sure. Paulus, we're almost twice his number. We'll condense our troops into a mass of sword and shield and smash through the center of his front line. Then we'll see what this barbarian is really made of. My only worry is whether he'll actually fight. Oh, he'll fight. We're outnumbered. And the Romans have chosen a battlefield that plays to the strengths of its infantry. It's a wise choice. But it's not as wise as they think. Our forces will be arranged like this. Like the outside of a bow. Strong, yet flexible. Mago, you will command this line. I can't emphasize enough its importance to this battle. The Romans will see our battle formation, but they will not fear us. They will have the confidence that comes only with greater numbers, and we will let them believe. Remember, their greatest strength can also be their greatest weakness. Just before our lines engage, I want you, Mahabal, to charge their cavalry. Advance! When they see our cavalry advance, they will respond. Whatever your losses, you must drive them back and sow complete confusion. as we press home the attack, but you must drive them back. Romans will respond by throwing forward another wave of infantry. They have superior numbers and they will use them. Legions of Rome! your ground slowly. Throw forward more and more troops. Forward, there is At this point, the Romans will think they have won. Let them taste victory. we mobilize our hidden reserves to swing around and block them off on either flank. They will be surrounded on three sides. They will have nowhere to go but backwards.
done with your cavalry and cut them off. There will be no mercy. It was the greatest battlefield victory of all time. 60,000 Romans perished at our sword. Cream of military and political leadership completely wiped out in a single day. A victory greater than that of Alexander or any hero who walked this earth before me. And yet I felt no sense of triumph. mark the darkest moment in the history of the Roman Republic. In a matter of hours, Hannibal had all but obliterated Rome and everything it represented. His next move would dictate the outcome of the war and the course of history. should move soon to Rome. My men could ride before dawn. We're not going to Rome. What? It's over. We've won. No. Not until Rome is destroyed, ripped apart, annihilated. Why? For what? We're not seven. Rome is on its knees. We don't need to tear apart the city just to prove we've won. We're not going any farther, Mahabal. It's over. So the gods haven't given everything to one man. You know how to win, Hannibal. But you don't know how to use a victory. What do you propose? We shall present Rome with terms for their surrender. Cannae was Hannibal's third major battle victory on Roman soil. By the terms of ancient warfare, it should have secured his ultimate victory over Rome. But Rome wasn't ready to accept defeat. I shan't recriminate. I shan't lay blame. But I shall say this. If Rome is to survive, we need a new army. Now! I will lower the age of enrollment to 17 and reduce the property qualifications for military service. Then I'll go further. I'm declaring an amnesty to all criminals and slaves willing to fight under the Roman standard. We will find soldiers anywhere we can. We will use whatever resources we have. And if that means stripping the temples of weapons and armor, those we have dedicated to the gods, then so be it. That is sacrilege. It is sense. The gods do not need those weapons. We do. No more pitched battles. No more grand gestures. We will grind the barbarian down little by little 
day by day until he is but dust. As I advised us to do right from the start. Arrogance and pride have brought us to where we are today. But this is not a fight about honor or glory or promotion. This is a fight to the death for the survival of Rome. She was supposed to capitulate. Did you seriously expect surrender from Rome? We wander this country at will. We destroy whatever force they set against us. We've defeated them in battle three times. The Romans cannot go on producing new troops forever, nor raising new leaders overnight. By all the rules and conventions of war, she should be finished. Did we play by the rules? Brother, I want you to return to Carthage. Why? To persuade the Senate to send more men so we can finish the job we started. We're going to take Italy city by city until Rome is so completely surrounded by hostile territory that they will be forced to surrender. These are the rings of Roman senators who've already fallen to our sword. They are the symbols of our many victories over Rome. What we need now is more men so that we can finish this war once and for all. Well, make a bargain. If the Romans are very nearly vanquished by your brother's heroic forces, why does he now seek our help? With fresh supplies and more men, this campaign would be over. I seem to recall that your brother assured us that his conquest would be a quick affair. How long has it been now? Three years. And what have you to show for it? This campaign is over, my friend. Hannibal's army in Italy will receive no further assistance from this Senate. And furthermore, I move that you, Mago Barca, be appointed to command those reinforcements that we are dispatching to Spain. We won, and won, and won again. But they sent troops and supplies anywhere. His enemies are more powerful. The jealousy against him is stronger than ever. As soon as the situation stabilizes in Spain, I will return to Hannibal. And take with me all the troops I can. If they are ready to abandon him because of his success, what will they do if he really fails? Pray that he does not fail. Without reinforcements, Hannibal's army couldn't force Rome into battle. For the next seven years, he was left isolated. while Rome grew stronger and emerged with a plan to try to finish the war with Hannibal. So, what is it that cannot wait until tomorrow, Scipio? I have a proposal. And so I gather. We've been fighting Hannibal for nine years, and you have given Rome a shield which the enemy cannot seem to break. You have held Hannibal. Yes, yes, what's your point? Victory comes not by the shield, but at the point of a sword. Those are very pretty words, Scipio. But we made exactly the same mistake before, and it brought us to the edge of destruction. Only a fool would make the same mistake twice. I say we keep the shield you have given us, but we take an invasion force to Spain. 
While Hannibal is occupied here, we'll rout the Carthaginians there. It's exactly what he did to us. And who will lead this new army? Aren't you a little young to lead an army under the standard of Rome? You know the rules. And you, Fabius, know how to break them. I'm sorry, Scipio. I don't think for one moment Rome would take the risk. But Fabius underestimated Rome's desire to resolve the war with Hannibal. And having observed Hannibal for more than ten years, Scipio was about to prove just how much he'd learned. We must always ask ourselves, what does the enemy least expect? And then we should do it. His brothers will expect us to engage them in open battle, as we have always done. But we shall not. Instead, we shall do exactly what Hannibal failed to do in Italy. We'll go straight for their capital. New Carthage is our goal. We will lure their defences away and ambush them. Then we shall sack the city. There will be no mercy. Scipio ransacked Spain. The one man who might have mounted a successful defense was under order to remain in Italy, powerless to help. General, I do not see good portents in the entrails of this beast. Well, look harder. I'm getting tired of your constant gloom. You would not have me lie to you, General. I'd have you cut open and put on this tray if it would help me, priest. Why disbelieve the guts? The war is no longer here. Scipio is in Spain, winning victory after victory over our territories while we rot here. Is this how it all ends, Hannibal? I summoned my brother, Hasdrubal. He doubted me, as do you. But together we can make a stand against Rome. And the Senate will never... Damn the Senate! I'll not be dictated to by them. I'll not be told what I may or may not do by cowards. I hadn't seen my brother, Hasdrubal, for almost 11 years. I requested that he brought his army from Spain to reinforce me. And he sent word that he was on his way. My hope soared, because together I knew we'd be invincible. Problem was, so did Fabius. His two armies plan to meet in Umbria. Good. Let us prepare to welcome him. How it all ends, Hannibal. I follow you to their death. I will be an enemy of Rome. With Hasdrubal's death, hopes of victory on Roman soil slipped away from Hannibal. Scipio returned to Rome triumphant from his Spanish campaign. Now he was fired with even greater ambition. 
Roman senators, I thank you. But there is more glory to be had. The conquest of Spain alone will not win us this war. To rid our country of the Carthaginian invader, we must take the fight to Africa, to Carthage itself. Strike Carthage and they will call Hannibal back to protect his homeland. And on African soil, I will defeat him! Just as Hannibal had once threatened the might of Rome, now Scipio stood poised to crush Carthage. We face the greatest crisis in the last 40 years, when the enemy treads on our soil and threatens our very existence. All measures must now be taken to ensure the security of the homeland. Should we not then recall Hannibal Barker from Italy? It is due in no small measure to Hannibal Barker that we find ourselves in this predicament. Had he not ventured on this fool's errand in Italy, had he not deprived Spain of its defenses and given comfort to our enemy? The council's decision not to recall Hannibal was a disaster. In a crushing defeat, the Carthaginian forces were destroyed at the Battle of Great Plains. Hannibal remained in exile for another year until he was finally recalled to defend Carthage and save the reputations of the politicians who had betrayed him. But the odds were against him from the start. We're losing our allies to Rome. Scipio is not stupid. He's using exactly the same tactics we used on him, sapping our strength by stealing our allies. Those allies include Numidian cavalry. How many? 4,000. So we're outnumbered in cavalry. Our one true advantage. All we have is an army of raw, untrained recruits. We still have you, General. And I have you, and by the gods, I'll need you. Scipio's pits at Zama. Yes. I'll need to know his exact numbers and disposition. Soon. Beasts are young, General. You'll need training. Well, you've never let me down yet, Vandegar. General. We thought we were dead, General. But... But they just showed us around the camp. They showed you around the camp? We were taken around by Scipio. By Scipio himself. A Scipio? We thought we were dead, man. We thought they'd kill us. But... But he... The general, he just showed us around the camp. What did he show you? Everything. His Numidian cavalry? Yes. That's what the Roman showed us first. I'm sure he did. I'm sorry, general. You did what you were sent to do. I can ask nothing more. You can go back to your hands. What is he trying to do? Is he trying to warn us off or get us to fight? I want to talk to him. Hannibal and Scipio came face to face for the first time on the plains of Zama.
This battle can serve no purpose, Scipio. I've always sought to understand you. To understand a mind that takes such risks. So it comes as some surprise to hear of Hannibal Barker running from a fight. Rome won't believe it. Too many people have died already. The pointless slaughter of fine men on both sides can be avoided. No. If there's one thing I've learned, it is that a war must be finished. Utterly. I have you to thank for that lesson. You have me to thank for everything you have become, Scipio. Were it not for me, I wonder, would you even command an army at all? I made you. You caused me to be. It's not the same thing. If you had taken Rome when its doors were open to you, we wouldn't be standing here now. You didn't finish it then, so I finish it now. Don't make this personal. This was personal from the moment you set foot on Roman soil. And tomorrow we shall decide the course of our history. The battle took place at Zama, 100 miles south of Carthage. In his 16-year campaign against Rome, Hannibal hadn't lost a single battle. assembled a force of 50,000 men, outnumbering Scipio's army of 30,000. His 80 war elephants were primed to deliver a single charge at the Roman infantry. anticipated Hannibal. At the last moment, as the elephants charged, great channels opened in the Roman lines, drawing the beasts into corridors of death. The elephants that survived turned and fled, stampeding their own men. Each of my Roman enemies revealed a weakness that I could exploit. I had outwitted, outfought, and outlasted all of them. But not Scipio. Scipio had imitated my strategy, copied my tactics, and now I saw just how well he understood me. He ordered the cavalry he had taken from me to seal our fate, just as we had done to them at Cana. At Zama, he used everything he'd learned from me to destroy me. Get off! You've got to save yourself! You've got to save yourself! Why are you alive? They will never feel safe! No path to gather me without hope! Save yourself! Get off! Hannibal fled from Zama. The war was over. Rome had won. But as long as Hannibal was alive, Rome could not rest. They finally tracked him down to Bithynia, in northern Turkey.
But Hannibal would never give Rome the satisfaction of killing him. And now, the time has come to rid the Romans of this hated old man. taken Rome when its doors were open to you, we wouldn't be standing here now. Is that all of it? Yes, General. I only wrote what he told me. I didn't... I know. But if anyone writes the story of that man, it shall be the Romans. Hannibal's war brought Rome to the brink of destruction. But by not taking Rome, after the Battle of Cannae, he failed to deliver the final decisive blow. His threat shot Rome into action. Eventually, they emerged as the force that would one day conquer not just Carthage, much of the known world. Even after his suicide, Hannibal lived on in the Roman mind, a painful memory, a dark presence, Rome's worst nightmare.